Australian rules football? In the U.S.? That's right. The United States Australian Football League is in a city near you. Go to USAFL.com, find your team, check them out. We're a group full of men and women just like you. Join us for the fun athletic competition. Stay for the camaraderie. We won the champion! Log on and sign up to join your team at USAFL.com. And welcome to Surf Cup Park in San Diego. Surf Cup Sports Park, Delmar. I'm Peter Holden with Gil Griffin to bring you the US AFL Nationals of 2017 Women's Division One Pool B against two sides who have yet to sc against two sides who are expected to have a close contest. Calgary just getting over Sacramento, New York in the close one going down. Dan Stemper, a man that had all the details on that, and of course is a great man who's writing a lot about football. He's a newcomer to the commentary team, but my God, he sounds professional. Gil Griffin, how are you? Yeah. All right, Peter. Good day to you. And uh, boy, the Kookaburras are back with a vengeance here at USAFL Nationals. They won the first title for Canada back in 2008 when they dethroned the three-time defending premiers Atlanta by five points back in 2008. This is their first time back in national since 2015 and in that year they swept the Division II competition to win the Division II premiership and as you mentioned Peter, they had a, a squeaky win as they, as they kicked 1-4-10 over Sacramento's 1-1-7 taking on the Magpies who in a heartbreaker lost by four points 4-1-25 to 3-3-21 uh, Denver. And uh, I just see a bunch of sockeyes go past who had a win. So football going well for for the Pacific Northwest with Seattle registering their first ever win. Uh, debuting at the tournament, they defeated Montreal in the game earlier. So is it Calgary that's left flying the flag for the Canadians? Because Montreal now can't make the grand final. But Calgary, after beating Sacramento, if they beat New York, they still remain on track. And you got to like Calgary's chances in this one. They have seven players from the Northern Lights and who played in the IC17. Some of the stars, Hillary Perry, Trisha Rolfe, Caroline Ireland, who are coming forward a lot. Robertson, Sarah Cuomo, she won the Cooper's Medal in 2015, so a lot of talent on that side. Indeed, as we see the uh, players lining up, uh, we're waiting for the umpire so we can have a toss. The umpire's having a chat over at the side, find out who's got the ball and who's got what, and now they're coming across now. So we'll have the toss of the coin, we'll choose who wants to go to what end, and then we'll be uh, underway in this contest. How, how heartbreaking would it be for New York losing against Denver? Not only a great rival, and they would have just, if they only walked away with that as a win, they would have walked away with a notch in the back going, wow, the mighty Denver, we, we beat them. To fall that short and then to have to say, right, We've got to pick up ourselves and we have to go again. And it's a good learning experience because the Magpies have become a very young side. A lot of turnover, a lot of a lot of new faces. Twelve, as a matter of fact, twelve new recruits the last time. And the last time the women's uh, the last time they were in a women's grand final was back in 2011. One of the veterans of the team, Kim Hemingway, uh, kicked three goals in the first match ever played by U.S. women in an AFL sanctioned match at, at back at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And so they definitely have a uh, goal kicking threat up forward. She kicked three goals in that game. Exactly. Uh, lucky not to be drafted. Um, she found herself playing in the forward line at the 2016 Nationals. Unfortunately, not effective simply because, um, because again, of the young New York side. They just couldn't get the transition right from half back to midfield to half forward. So the delivery just wasn't getting down there. It was a tough tournament for them. They walked away without a win compared to a year beforehand where... They were hoping for Minnesota to upset Denver when they could have walked away with the title. Absolutely. One other interesting note about the Magpies, too. They have scored just one goal in four matches this year, so they have definitely had had trouble in having an avenue to goal. And uh, the other thing is, too, they've also gone the absolute opposite way because they've kicked ten or more goals twice, including the last match before today, in a win over Boston. So you could kind of say this is a team of scoring extremes. Indeed. And, and the one thing about New York, they've always pride themselves on their defense. The defense has always been very good. But again, because of the young side, they're, they're unlike, unlike the San Francisco, as if I point out for an example, or, or even the Montreal's, even though they lost, they're missing that midfield run. They just need to be able to find players that can create a run from the midfield to get it forward, to get it to Hemingway. And then that really would open up their game. But to be fair, the bedrock of any side and any base for a side that you build is on defense. Absolutely, and you got to have that strong spine. Absolutely. And we should point out as well, Gil, that uh, helping them today in the coaching stakes and doing the running is Catherine Smith from the Melbourne Football Club. AFL Women's Player, she was drafted uh, last year. We dubbed her online at Girls Play Footy as Ms. Football because she just lives and breathes the game. Was award awarded the Peter Sell uh, Coach of the Year last year at just the age, get this, of only 17. That's what she was awarded, I think it was late 2015. Umpire holds the ball aloft. 
We wait for him because there's no hooter to blow the whistle. And we are underway here on this field at uh, Division 1 Pool B at the Surf Cup Sports Park in San Francisco, I was going to say San Francisco, San Diego. Don't get the towns confused as Natalie Wolf tried to come away with the football. Had it momentarily, got dispossessed. Umpires blown the whistle and said the player in uh, Andrea Casillas was caught holding the football and it'll be a Kookaburra's free kick. They go with a studded approach towards the centre half four position. Ball went out the back. Coplo is lurking around. Coplo, big ball. Oh, don't argue. You don't argue with Grace Coplo. She got through two of them and then kicked it up towards the half-back flank position. Got through several sets of hands. Plenty of numbers back there for Calgary. I think we're in the 24. Is uh, is it Cuomo? Have you got on your sheet? I got Sarah Cuomo. Sarah Cuomo. Thank you very much. You got the pronunciation correct because I know you've got a, a few different numbers. You got the latest update information. Sure do. As they go short with the football, Casillas was there at the back trying to do the defending work. Uh, Val Guthoff got his 23 now, has it. Now kicks it long inside 50 with the kick. Went over the head of a few. Went out the back door. Good tackle. Good pressure laid on. Coming at it again is Alana Robertson. Couldn't quite squeeze out the footy. Still in dispute. 25 metres out from goal. Greg was overrunning the football. Hurry snap from the Calgary Cockerbarras is away to the right. Gil, that is the first score of the game. And it's Calgary, one behind, New York no score. It is a minor score, and looks like here we go with the Magpies kicking in from their back line. And the kick goes out to the wing, low ball, and on the half volley is taken. Player wrapped up over there. The umpire will probably want to ball this up as we get going. Little rolling mall trying to take away from that. We'll have another ball up. Okay, and Calgary wins that rug tap. Very neatly done, and a kick down to the forward line, and they might have a chance here. And getting to the ball and picking it up very quickly. Another handball inside, but it goes awry. Kukabur is having a hard time controlling it now, looking for an opportunity, and the Magpie is trying to come away with it. And again, into the scrum they go. It looks like we're going to have a ball up. No, umpire says play on. And the Magpies come away from it in defense now, dispossessed. And a kick and a shot at goal, and it is left of the mark for a behind. Unlucky there for Calgary, but they're doing all the attacking. They move ahead to two behinds. New York yet to score as uh, we've played about two and a half minutes into this opening half. We're Calgary playing. looking dangerous here, going forward several times. Indeed, and the umpire has blown the whistle now. The player on the player kicking out might have stepped over the mark. Now, so what the rule is in Aussie rules football, there's kind of like a rectangle coming out of the goals. That is called the goal square. And when you kick out from full back, you have to kick the ball either to yourself and then run, or if you do go for a long kick, you have to kick it within that rectangle. And if you don't, if you accidentally step over the line, the umpire calls for the ball back, and it's a ball up on that goal line, which is very handy for the attacking team, in this case being Calgary. Joukowsky is there for the... Calgary Kookaburras. She brought the ball to ground. Got knocked away from her. Hurried snap on goal is away to the left by Mansell and it will register as a minor score. Gill, it's Calgary three behind. New York get the score. And again, Calgary with that pressure in the forward 50 taking advantage there of that violation of stepping beyond the goal square. This time they'll get it right as the Lady Magpies kick in. It goes over the head of a couple of players out into space and again the Magpies have trouble getting rid of it dispossessed and the Kookaburras are falling on it and the umpire now is going to have another ball up. little push and shove going on there. And we'll do it all again. Right near center wing. And the ruck tap to the advantage of Calgary. Calgary losing. Doesn't have all the numbers. Pushing forward. Ball comes to ground. And a handball out of the back. And then a nice tackle there taken down. But Calgary still emerges with it. And that is Hillary Perry kicking in and a mark taken there and a handball away. Probably should have held on to it. Perry gets the ball back, looking to go inside. Kicks toward the middle of the ground. Ball takes a bounce and then coming up with it and shooting it goal and kicking it through is Caroline Ireland. And that's the first major of the game. So it turns Calgary on to 139 New York, no score. 15 and a half minutes remaining to half time. And there we are. So 14, Caroline Island. Did and I what? missed my opportunity to say, sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was hoping for an opportunity like that, and she just granted it to me. 
Excellent indeed, Caroline Island. And as we said, Hillary Perry wearing the 26. A little bit different to the numbers they provided us uh, from Tournament Central. Hopefully they'll have that sorted for Sunday's games because this is the first of two games for Calgary that we will be covering. The first of two for New York. Uh, as the ball is back in the middle of the ground, we'll be covering the New York-Sacramento game and the Denver-Calgary game. That will be an interesting one tomorrow morning as the ball is brought to ground. Plenty of players over the top of it. Running out the back is uh, Wolf. Going in there and trying to knock it is Cadding. Taking away though. Perry on the left boot. Now towards half forward. Awkward bouncing football. Tchaikovsky now going after it. Couldn't pick it up. Wolf, uh, pardon me, Coplo rather. Charged the way through. Coplo on the right boot with strength. Kicks it in towards the middle of the ground. Ball brought down. Plenty of numbers here for the Calgary Kookaburras. I've got uh, Ville Guth there for uh, as 20 or something or rather there. 23 for Calgary. Now getting it across there to the 19 and Chabout. Chabout had it now and she goes inside 50 with a kick. Awkward bouncing football. Trying to hold it up. Davidson's lurking around there as well for the Magpies. Trying to hold it up for Dua and the umpire blows the whistle and says, I'll have the football back. Thank you very much. We'll have a bounce. 35 metres out from the Calgary goal. They're attacking the left of screen. Could have been a high tackle there, paid too, but wasn't. So a bounce, or not a bounce, a throw up going on here. And into the ruck they go. And Calgary with the tap, but unfortunately for Calgary, New York has an opportunity to take it. Now Calgary reclaims it. Handball over the top and a paddle forward, almost like a back paddle forward. And going for it down there, the, the Kookaburras go. And it looks like another scrum going on. And the umpire will want the ball to ball it up again. Beautiful sunshiny conditions here. And the wind not much of a factor anymore. Just really blowing across the ground. It's more of a cool breeze anyway, which is handy in these warmer conditions. Waiting for the ball to pop out there. Laura Hayton was waking, working to try and pick that up. Going in there was Gallagher. Taken away from her. Hurry kick, though, for the Calgary Kookaburras. Awkward bounce of the goal square. It just won't settle. And uh, going in there to try and pick it up. And uh, bouncing off one and having a hurried snap at goal was the number 12 there in Patricia Jaroski and the umpire will signal a minus score. So Calgary extend their lead. They go to 1-4-10. New York yet to score. We've gone about seven minutes into this first half. And Calgary already has equaled their score from the first match kicking 1-4-10. That was their whole output when they beat Sacramento in their first match. And Sacramento were uh, came out of that game with full of confidence going, wow, you know, we were expected to get smashed and we, we really pushed them. And they've got a lot of new players as well, Sacramento. So they're looking to claim a scalp. Could it be Denver? Could it be New York? We'll find out. Absolutely. You know, one of the things with Calgary and Sacramento too could be the travel time. Sacramento just a couple of hours up the road from San Diego by air and a uh, longer way to travel here from Calgary than from New York, but Sacramento having a short trip down here. Now there is an intercept mark taken down there by Calgary. Player number 32. I've got on my sheet is Becky Emerton. Becky Emerton, okay, and a kick out toward the wing taken and a nice tackle there. Although, was it high? It was high against It was Wolf. high against, against Grace Coplo. Chris, Grace I, I get getting Coplo and Wolf confused because they're both two mean well, customers. Well, remember, too, there are two different Wolves. There's one with two Fs and one with one F. And they'll huff and they'll puff and they'll blow your house in, Gil. There you go. Okay, here come the Calgary Kookaburras again on the attack. A kick goes very long and just wide of the goalpost for yet another behind. So Calgary kicking 1-5-11 thus far to no score for the Magpies. Just to give an idea of how us commentators are calling at the moment, uh, whether they've got scribbled down notes like Gil has or because the Tournament Central um, uh, printer broke down uh, and the figures are not quite up to date, we're literally reading it off our mobile phone as well. So it's uh, not the easiest of things to do when you're calling as the ball is kicked long in towards the middle of the ground. New York trying to find a way to get into their front half. They haven't got there so far in this game. Casillas was back there. Going through there is Wolf on the right boot. Nat Wolf now kicks it long and high. Parked this up underneath it. It's Ashlyn Grigg. Grigg's got the football. Halfback flank, far side of the ground near the beer garden here at Surf Cup Sports Park. Now goes long. Trying to get onto the football. Couldn't do so. Making the contest there was Lindsay Smith, who we had on the Girls Play Footy podcast just the other week. Now the ball is on the deck. The umpire's coming in and said, did he say holding or my ball? He signaled holding instead. That's what it looked like. And it will be a New York football. They have it. Lead on by Hemingway. He's charging out there at the half-forward flank. Oh, oh, it marks it. What a leap. 
just threw back both knees and got airborne then with no one really to jump onto. And she, really arched the back. She presented herself well and she kicks it down toward the top of the arc and that kick is broken up by the Kookaburras and now there's a lane to run wide. And here's a kick along the wing and it's spilling out there near Caroline Ireland again. Ireland looking to get the ball back from a handball. There looked like a swing and a miss on that handball, but the umpire said it was okay. Ball comes to ground. And a tackle being laid out there by the Magpies Emma Kading. And let's see, the umpire is going to ball it up. The umpire will ball it up now. Daniel Gallagher in the ruck for New York and a swing and a miss on that ruck tap by New York and by Calgary going out now toward the boundary line. Calgary, she's bumped off the ball now. Nice bump out there. Picked up by the Magpies, Emma Kading kicks it down toward the forward line, toward half forward now. Kading gets it back, loses the handle on the ball. Calgary now trying to get out of there. And a big pile and a takedown now. Calgary comes back, emerges, and surely she was taken high. Surely Calgary should get a free kick from this. Umpire disagrees and no, says it'll be a ball up instead. That. Well, that's, that's why I am not an umpire. <laughs> and away we go again. I think 26 to Hillary Perry, isn't it? And she now has the football. She kicks it long in towards the uh, center wing. Again, they cry high. Again, the umpire says, I know nothing. <laughs> and they move the ball towards the middle of the ground. Casillas put it on her right boot, tried to gain some meters, but only got it as far as Alana Robertson, who then got mowed down. Is that 25? Because Hemingway's asking the question and the umpire didn't call play on. Uh huh. So even if the player does go to play on, if the umpire actually doesn't say those words play on, it's not, and you can have it pinned against you. So now the ball is with the Calgary Kookaburras. They find themselves between center wing and center half forward. Looking ahead with a short toe poke kick. Will it work out okay? It does. Lands in the 18 to Cole Robertson. I've got on my sheet. The yep. goal, of course, uh, played for the Northern Lights at IC 17. Gets on the right boot. Long and high inside 50 with the kick. Got away from the hands there of uh, the 14, which you had there as Caroline Island. Not Mansell on your records. Now going in to try and pick it up. There's Fedor. Comes out of defense. Put it on the right boot. Floating kick. Hillary Perry gets underneath that. Hillary Perry already being very impressive, taking some intercept marks and reading the play very well. She'll have a free kick now. Looking for targets. Will she go long or short? She goes sort of medium distance, top of the square. Ball falls in. Now comes out the back near the forward pocket. Calgary trying to work something from deep in the extreme pocket. There's a shot, and it's smothered, and it is out of bounds. Clock at the moment says seven and a half minutes to play in this half. Calgary 1-5-11, New York no score. Here on YouTube.com forward slash USAFL. Gil Griffin with you and Peter Holden from girlsplayfooty.com. Mark Gonzalez on camera as the ball is thrown back into play. Will it be shuffled through for a point? It will, and it puts it out to an even two-goal margin. 1-6-12 Calgary, New York yet to score here at Surf Cup Sports Park. Delmar, San Diego. And you can't really say that Calgary have been wasteful. It's just that many of their opportunities have just found that behind post instead of the goal post. It's not that they've had set shots and missed them. As the ball is now in the forward line with Ireland, another shot on goal. It's away to the left. And, of course, as soon as I say that, there's a shot that goes wayward there from a snap, and now it's 1-7-13 to no score. For those that are watching Aussie Rules for the first time, you're watching this vision as one goal up high tries to wave the flag and the other one's asleep at the other end of the ground. He's actually texting on his phone, I think, from what I can see. And that's uh, Alana Robertson with another intercept mark. And again, Calgary keeping the pressure on New York, keeping their ball in their forward 50. Here's a kick, and it is going to go a little bit wide, but it may be marked. No, off hands. Off hands down near the goal square and out of bounds. As I was trying to explain earlier, for those that are watching Aussie Rules for the first time and watching this on YouTube, they might say, what's all these people with different coloured shirts running around? Yes, at Aussie Rules, well, the game's underway. You can have in orange or green, which is the umpires. They'll be running around with their shirts. You'll have pink, which is the water people, which can give you a drink during the middle of the game. Or a toe palmer, yellow is the water uh, people. And you also have as a quick snap on goal in the goal square. Is it through? It is. It's a yes, goal it to Calgary in the goal square. Falling over at the last minute, the umpire said, no, it hadn't got across the line. They'll pay that. So 2-7-19 to no score. As we're saying, yes, the water people in yellow can run on the ground at any time, as long as they're not within the area of immediate play, usually about 50 metres away. And the people that run on with pink that you might see, they're the runners. So essentially, they're the messengers for the coach. And again, if they don't interfere with play, they can run on any time. 
but their job is they have to run straight on and run straight off, deliver the message, come back again. And there's kind of an opposite parallel for those Americans who are watching Aussie Rules for the first time. Very differently, the coaches, uh, in this competition, the coaches will be on the sidelines, but at the, at the elite levels, AFL women's, and also in the AFL, the coaches sit at uh, press level, and they're observing things from that box. And essentially, they have like all their uh, six assistant coaches up there, but at the same time, they'll have someone in charge on the boundary line, and they have headsets on, obviously, feeding the messages down to them. Absolutely, and of course, you would not want to be a phone in <laughs> any uh, in <laughs> any coaching box in the AFL, because you'd get slammed around fair enough many times. So ball in the middle of the ground once again. They're trying to find a way to work forward. Coplo not happy with the attention she was getting, trying to shove someone out of the way. And uh, the umpire says we'll call for another ball up. And that's what we'll have right here in the middle of the ground. Away we go again. One out there by Wolf. Ball hit the ground. Plenty of numbers there, including the 23. Velguth, you got it. And here comes Calgary again. That's Rachel Shabbat kicking it down forward. And now Calgary could be away. The chase is on. And one uh, Kukabura kick, passes it off now to Caroline Ireland. Ireland with a kick down toward the goal square. If it's marked, it could be big trouble for New York, but it goes over the head of the intended target, out of bounds for another behind. So that moves them now to 2-8-20. That's 10 scoring shots to New York. No score. Things are going a bit wobbly here for the Magpies. As we wait for the ball to be brought back into play, it's a wobbly kick now. The umpire says to the player. I think again you've again. stepped over the line and that will be a ball up. So the tricky thing as well is as much as we've got the painted line here is because in the US there's not many ovals around and you have to play on odd shaped grounds as well and some places you can't actually, they don't, they don't allow you to spray paint the line so they actually mark witches hats and in some cases like goal squares they just don't bother to mark it with witches hats. So that <laughs> some are not quite used to that rule or used to trying to go as close to the line as you can to get advantage, but not going over the line. And by the way, Americans tuning into us, witches' hats would translate into cones. We oh, call yes. them cones here in the States. So as the ball is on the far side of the ground for Calgary, wanting to try and come back in. Board, it was a fingertip up, but it was a good mark taken by oh, yeah, Katie, Katie Kidd. Katie Kidd. So she has the footy, and she is 45 metres out directly in front. Give the kid a chance. As she gets close to the player on the mark, winds up, has a go, not bad distance. How's the accuracy as the post was nearly taken out by Coppola on the way through. And the umpire signals point. So 2-9-21 for Calgary. No score for New York. We've only got two and a half minutes remaining to half time. And again, having trouble with the kick in as that kick wobbles toward the boundary line and is going to be out and it'll be a boundary throw-in, and another advantageous situation for Calgary is they keep the pressure on in their forward 50. And actually, is it going to be a free kick to Calgary? Yes, it's a free kick to Calgary, so I'm not sure if that went out on the floor or deliberate was called. I, can, I can't imagine it being deliberate. But in any, in any case, the kick in from Calgary, and it's marked an intercept mark down there uh, by New York by Siobhan McHale. And Siobhan will look to move it up the line as she has some targets presented. And she does. She goes up along the wing. And that one nearly, nearly cut off by Calgary. New York wins the ball back, moving toward the line and a kick. And that's going to go out on the full. And the ball is going to be right back in Calgary's hands. So the opportunity now for the Cookerboroughs to squeeze one just before half time. And it's Katie Kidd again. And she'll get the free kick. She winds up, she kicks it down toward the pocket, into traffic, and another intercept mark. And again, McHale is right there. So she has been really good at reading the play, and so she is in the right place at the right time. There might not be a see around, but it's McHale's Navy back there as she gets going on the right boot, goes further up the line, only to be intercepted by Caroline Island. And there is a see around. If you go a couple of miles west, you've got the Pacific. And goes towards the uh, top of the goal square. Ball just falling short. Pack of players form. One of them trying to hold it up there was uh, Sarah Witzke. And the umpire signals for a ball up. Deep inside the forward 50 for the Calgary Cookerboroughs. Island again took it out of the ruck. Dropped it. Slapped it forward. Tried to get a hurry kick away. Got balled over in the, pre in the process. And I think the umpire signaled that was too high. So 15 metres out. 45 degree angle near half time. A chance here. If I'm right, we've got his number 13 on your scorecard there. You don't have a 13? On 13 on No, Calgary? 33. Pardon me. 33. There we are. 33. That's Sarah Witzke. Witzke. 
thought I saw a 13, but it's a 33. It's a 33. I'm she's getting old, my eyes. <laughs> she's lining up for goal. Should be a relatively easy shot. And did that hook left at the last minute? Did she get it? No, it sneaks around. She has a goal. She has a goal. And Calgary move now to... 3-9-27 New York. No score, 20 seconds to half time. So Calgary will go in with a big lead at halftime over New York. New York will try and regroup. New York must be feeling a bit gutted at the moment, like we said after that loss against Denver, to not even be inside their forward half, really. They are breaking down. They're struggling to find a way to cut. They, they hold up well, but they struggle to come out of the fence. As uh, I think the they're looking for the whistle. Yep, the ump goal umpire signaled. So that is half time. That is should be half time here at uh, Division One Pool B at Surf Cup Sports Park in San Diego. The score at the moment: Gill three nine twenty seven Calgary, New York no score. And you know that's another thing that you were talking about with, when we were talking about inexperience of the New York side. You hate to concede a goal so close to the dying sec, so close in the dying seconds of the half. And that was really a free kick they didn't need to give away there. Looked unnecessary, and uh, it led right to a goal that has put further distance between Calgary and New York. They're really going to have to regroup and find a way to get some run. And that's and that's probably their problem at the moment, New York. They're unable to get a clean handball and run. They just can't get any run coming off their back line. They've got the bigger bodies. They've got the Coplos, they've got the Wolves, and they've got the Casillas as well that can charge through and make an impact on a contest. But it's what the next step is that's just not happening for them. Right, and even getting that handball chain going or seeing where the next kick and the next kick after that is going to go. So there's been real lack of continuity. And haven't those Northern Lights players been dangerous? Caroline Island whipping around the flanks. Hillary Perry, if we talk about drive, she's the one that's giving that drive into the forward 50 for the Calgary Kookaburras. Absolutely, and that just, that just shows that international experience. And uh, again, the Magpies, a young side, really looking to find their way. We'll take this opportunity to take a break here at Surf Cup Sports Park in San Diego. It is at the moment the Calgary Kookaburras, 3-9-27, leading New York, no score. We'll be back right after this. We're about to learn how to teach our kids slash teach ourselves how to kick a footy. <laughs> okay, tips to kick the footy. Number one, nose over toes, which means just gonna be over the football. You don't wanna be looking up to where you're kicking, you wanna be over the footy, laces to where we're kicking it. We're gonna drop it and we're gonna point our toe. Nose to toes, and then we're dropping, but and not, not throwing up. Good, perfect. We can go home. <laughs> mm, I love that summer feeling. Happiness is calling at San Diego.org. My first game, I stood there and I was just like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just going to run. I just kept going and I kept going to practice, I kept going to the games, and eventually it just clicked. And I was just like, oh, I get it now, like this is fun. Aussie Rules is also known as footy is the equivalent of like the NFL here and so in Australia they call it AFL. So in Australia it's still 
huge sport, especially for the women, it's getting even bigger. It's empowering for women, young women. It's really great to just be able to run around and just have so much fun with a bunch of people that love the same sport that you do. It just gives me this energy that I just can't describe and it just brings me like so much joy. <laughs>
Wolf is there, wants to go, oh, pumped off the ball. Really, you see Natalie Wolf just taken to town. And all wrapped up, the umpire calls for ball ups. That's Kuznetsky that got caught then. I think I might have. And uh, she had, no, in fact, it was the 32, pardon me, Emma Kading. Ball is back in the middle again. One out by Wolf. Brilliant run down tackle laid on there by Sabor McHale. Hurry kick out of the pack. One bounce and over the boundary line and out of bounds. Very close to being called deliberate too. If you take the interpretation of the rule, she was trying to find a target, but looked like maybe an attempt to get it over the line. Lani Silvio from uh, Los Angeles doing the throw-in work as her club is on duty for that. Hillary Perry on the left boot looking for, guess who, Caroline Island. And yeah, out marks nice her mark. opponent there in Futa and gets going with a kick, Perry. Now towards the half-forward flank position. Foot race on here, two on two. Casillas running, managed to create the pressure and make Nicole Robertson drop the football, but she went back for a second crack, put it on the right boot, close towards the boundary line. It will go over the boundary line and out of bounds now. 55 metres out from goal. Calgary attacking towards the northern end of the ground or for your TV viewing to the right-hand side. The Kookaburras lead by 25 points. And the boundary throw. Nicole Robertson had a big swing and a miss when she was trying to kick toward goal. Now trying to clear it as Coplo for the Magpie. She's wrapped up. Now the ball squirts out. Kookaburra is trying to get it. They have numbers. It's into space. And now the Magpies have an opportunity to get it out again, but not going far because here come the Kookaburras. And here comes a shot on goal from Caroline Ireland. It takes a roll toward the goal square. And just at the last minute, it dies. And the Kookaburra is trying to pick it up. Another Aaron kick trying to get toward the goal. But I believe she was already being tackled and taken to ground. And should be a boundary throw in. So. We wait for a throw in deep inside the Calgary forward line as Ari Lockett uh, gets up off the ground, feeling a bit worse for wear, and is going to come off the ground and be replaced by Stephanie Russo. As, in fact, it was a free kick, rather, for the New York Oh, Magpies. that's right. So it is a free kick for the Magpies. So it must have been on the full. So nonetheless, it's taken by Casillas. She decides to work it wide, trying to find uh, Wolf, who goes for a run. Puts it on the right boot, long kick, Hemingway chasing after the football, left palm, tried to put it to advantage, wanted Lawless to run onto it, did so, got the right hand hand pass, in towards the middle of the ground, congestion there, who's going to get the uh, football clearest, few bumps laid on, some solid hits, got to love that type of football, coming over the top is Chabot, ball spilt out though, Coplo is caught and the umpire says it was a throw. And it will be a free kick going the way of Calgary. And uh, who have you got as the 21 there on your sheet? That's Trisha, Trisha Rolf. Rolf. Trisha Rolf. Another Northern Lights player. That's right. So she will have a free kick. She wheels around and kicks it and goes short out to Rochelle Chabot. And then she does a little shake and bake there, sells some candy, kicks it down toward half forward. Ball spills to ground. Or was, that a, was that a mark taken? That's a mark taken. That's a mark taken by Calgary. That's Nicole Robertson. And Robertson is right near the 50 meter arc doesn't step back far kicks it high into there and that wind is taking it toward the middle not marked ball comes to ground and then out there now is mccarthy and mccarthy kicks it forward doesn't go very far scramble for it on the ground here comes the the kookaburra is again with a shot on goal and that takes a crazy bounce toward the boundary and then a dribbler by ireland and it's stopped on the line by new york and there's a kick through and a goal, I believe. No. no, it's a behind. It's a behind. Point blank range, oh, Alana wow. Robertson, yeah. but does not get the goal. She was right out in front. Had to try and snap around the pack, though, which was always going to be awkward. 3 10, 28, two behinds. Six minutes gone in this uh, second half. Here in this uh, women's Division I Pool B match for the 2017 USAFL Nationals. And the umpire has blown the whistle for a free kick and uh, paid the advantage to New York. Kicked it in towards the uh, middle of the ground, was going to get the intended target of Kading. She lost out forward, taken away though by Charbot, who went towards the top of the goal square, only for a mark to be taken on the last line of defense. So the Magpies come out towards the broadcast side, managing to stick it then with Sabor McHale. It was a tough one, it's right at the fingertips, but stuck like glue. McHale looks further ahead, on the right boot, going short with a kick, trying to find Coplo. She asks for in the back, the umpire says, I'm not buying. Carried there by Hillary Perry, got on the right boot, went towards the top of the square. No good, trying to go in again, McHale got thrown off the football. 
Going back there, Piri again gets the hand pass. The uh, little candy cell was done beautifully by the 21 in uh, Trisha Rolfe. Put it in towards the dangerous hot spot at the top of the square. Trying to charge the way through there. It's Jabbat again. Can't get a hold of the football. Goes in one more time, only to be slammed into the ground. Thanks for coming there, Nicole McCarthy. Now getting onto it, there is Trisha Rolfe. Goes towards the top of the goal square. Came off hands. Casillas is there. Brought down to ground. What will the umpire say? Blows the whistle and says, I'll have a ball up. Thank you. And New York dodges a very big... They, dodge, they don't dodge a bullet. They dodge a cannonball right there. Because if, that, if, if she had been gone, it would have been a point-blank set shot right at goal. Rook tap... Bounce down. New York has it. And another situation in which the player is being wrapped up. She gets a kick she, away. No, no, no. Pinned. She got pinned. Did she get pinned? I believe she... Yes, she did. Yes, she did. That would have been Natalie Wolf getting pinned, getting pinned yeah. by the umpire down there she's for holding the ball. She's arguing she got the kick away, but I think it was fair. I think maybe if you go back in the vision, it was clearly the full 360, so it was all the way around. Maybe so. That was definitely borderline. Instead of handball, instead of a kick at goal. And now a kick at goal. The kick is on the way. And that is through for a goal. A little difficult to see with the sun in the eyes and the angle that we're at who nailed that one. 4-10-34 Calgary, New York two behinds. 11 and a half minutes remaining in this second half. Playing two 20-minute halves here in the USAFL Nationals. No time on. Unless, of course, there is a major injury. As the umpire has the ball in the middle of the ground and I start to turn like a lobster red because I don't have any sunscreen on that's not very smart but I couldn't find any <laughs> fortunately I was blessed with not having so much of that problem <laughs> <laughs> me being of the browner persuasion umpire throws the football up in the air ball hit the ground now can they try and come away with clear football indeed it is and it's taken by the 23 in Volgath but only be intercepted there I think that was uh, Wolfie who managed to get on that football wanted to go in the Hemingway direction awkward bats Hemingway turned it clean gave the don't argue Hemingway still going at 50 metres out her kick has ricocheted off the side of an opponent close towards the boundary line Hemingway chased it up and put her into the ground hashtag suplex city Kim Hemingway really trying to take matters into her own hands. Some of that frustration may be showing among the more experienced players of the Magpies as right now they are take, they are copping a hiding and trying desperately to get back. I can understand the frustration, as we said on air at the start, about them being so close away from a Division One title in 2015 and then winless last year and haven't really won since 2015 at Nationals anyway. And that frustration's really built up and they're looking to unleash it on some team. Hopefully that will turn into... It's, Sooner rather than later, four points for them. Umpire blows the whistle and uh, calls for a ball up. Watching on there, Ashlyn Grigg. And we'll reset ourselves between centre and centre-half forward for the New York Magpies, who got two behinds, got off to a flying start to start the second half, but then that just kind of fizzled out from there. Hurry kick now in towards the middle of the ground. Mark taken, Becky Emerton. As and Becky Emerton has a lot of space, but no one really to kick to. Now she gets one, but it goes off of her boot toward the boundary line, takes a bounce backward right into the hands of Grace Coplo. And now she's taken down without the ball. She might win a free kick for this one. And she's appealing for a free kick. And will she be paid? Yes, she will. I didn't think she realized she got it. I think she was thinking, yeah, I've got to pit me for in the back. The umpire saying, no, 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 it's your free kick. Yep. So Grace Coppola with a free kick, looking to go deep. And there it is, toward the hot spot. Pack of players fly, spills out of the back, taken by Calgary with a lot of room to run, a kick up the wing. And coming toward it now is Carmen Flores. Flores with it toward the boundary line, now loses control. And the Magpies have control of it. They kick it, and I believe the umpire has blown the whistle. No, the umpire has not blown the whistle. Another whistle from another game. And a kick toward the wing from Calgary. Ball getting close to going out of bounds, but then controlled. Now a hand pass toward the middle, but it's over the head of the intended target. And a little push down there. Ball spills to ground, and now Calgary emerges with it again. A kick and a mark taken. Mark taken out there by Nicole Robertson. Out on center wing. Now she'll set up an attack. And she looks further afield for options. Decides to stick wide on the half forward flank. Coming out to try and meet the ball, Taylor Davidson. Davidson picks it up and then has to try and track off a tackle. She got spun 360. Umpire saying no, he's not paying the free kick. I think he's just standing there ball watching more than anything. Casillas goes after it to see if she can try and get involved. Coplo there as well. Wanted to get the don't argue. Now the umpire's blown the whistle. 
And uh, now what's he signalling here? Is he signalling free kick? He is to the way of Calgary. And they'll have the ball on the half forward flank. Gill, far side of the ground. Far side of the ground and the ball kicked in. By the way, Americans just watching Aussie rules for the first time. The don't argue is the equivalent of giving someone the Heisman, the stiff arm. But don't argue is what they call it in Australia. And another rundown tackle. Ball spills out. Calgary in control with a lot of room to maneuver here. And there's another kick going forward. Ball spills to ground again. Out of the out of the back, now the Magpies emerge on it and try and get it out of their danger zone. And then a kick and an intercept marked by Calgary. Calgary again with the windup just outside 50. Kicks and on the half volley, it's picked up there uh, by Sarah Witzke. Witzke with a kick down the forward line. And now the Magpies emerge with it again. A kick, another half volley, a ricochet off of Coplo. Coplo trying to fight through. She's ganged up upon by three, and she might be called for holding the ball. No, copped it over the shoulder. Copped it over the there. shoulder. Okay, all right, too high. So Coplo again wins another free kick. So Grace Coplo with the ball at centre half back, looking further afield. Thinking about going down the central corridor. Long and high, Hemingway went charging towards the contest. Went out the back door, looking for an option there and Lawless. Chased after the football, only to be picked up there by Chabout, who had it momentarily, knocked away from her. Hargrave goes in for it, wraps up her opponent. Umpire blows the whistle and says, I will call for a ball up. Thank you very much. We have uh, six minutes, 30-odd seconds remaining in this second half of this Women's Division 1 pool being matched between Calgary and New York. The umpire... Oh, geez, the umpire blew the whistle to try and pay the mark, but blew it too early, and Ireland dropped it, and he had to call play on. So a little bit of a mess there. Hurry, little kick away. No, no throw. The umpire doesn't pay it. Oh, dearie me. Hand pass away now. Opportunity for Calgary. On the right boot. Goes towards centre half forward. Drop football. Coming out afterwards there is Ari Lockett. It's uh, no whistle played. Hand pass out there to Casillas. Casillas trying to get a hurry kick away. Ball hit the ground. Trying to spin around there was the uh, player wearing the 19 inch about. Had it momentarily. Ireland got it. Hand pass back while under pressure. Now Hillary Perry going for a run. Puts on the afterburners. Goes a bounce. Gets the football back. Still going from about 45 out towards the top of the square. Through hands. Can Calgary shuffle it through? Will New York concede the point? The goal umpire's on the line. And he says, well, the umpire's chatting to the goal, um, to the goal umpire what the score is. Bit of a chat going on. The goal umpire looking uncertain. And they're having a chin wag. Enough time to make a key a tea and serve a couple of biscuits. Now he says one behind. Peter, I have a question for you too. Thinking yeah. about fundamentals, is it just me or do I notice a lot of the ball drops for the kicks being done with one hand rather than two hands? Is that something that you find yeah. unique? Um, yeah, because essentially you're not supposed to be really doing it with two hands. You're supposed to be doing it with one. That's how you're supposed to be practicing. You have the ball too, but you let go of the other hand. More to create balance with your other hand where you let the other hand, uh, your right hand, if you're a king with the right boot, to try and guide it onto your boot. The two-handed drop, the problem is when you do that and try and release the ball, you kind of more arch your back and you mm -hmm. kind of lose balance and it kind of, when you just drop it, it just turns out to be a flat punt. Some people like it, they prefer it, but usually to be easier on the run, it's better to go with the one hand. And because you free up the other hand as well, not only do you get balance, it allows you to, when you've got a snap, to try and push away an opponent and break that pack so you get that clear kick. Absolutely. And they're bursting out of the middle is Calgary there. That is Nicole McCarthy with a shot on goal. It goes wide. And we'll see what the umpire calls on this one. Will it be yet another behind? I believe so. The one thing you don't obviously see in Aussie rules anymore, and it was popular up to the 60s, even some in the 70s, is instead of actually using the drop bun, it used to be the drop kick, where you would actually drop the ball in front of you and then kick it. And uh, that was a popular too, but many found that with the drop punt, it is more accurate, and obviously that came into the game and superseded the drop kick. Some like the drop kick because you actually got further distance on it. Okay. All right, so Sarah Witzke now. Has a free kick. She'll kick it. Doesn't go kind of in the direction where she wants to go. Almost a mark, and then it falls to ground. And a big scramble for the ball, and the umpire will likely ball this up. And there it is. We'll have another ball up now in the forward pocket. Ball pushed out. Calgary with a shot again. Coming around and shooting, and... It is off hands, off hands of the Magpies, and here's Wolf. Wolf leading the charge out of the back, kicks it long. She is going for a player up in the forward wing area. That's Andrea Hargrave. Ball on the wing. 
And it's funny, I was about to say Gold Coast because those you know, those jumpers are very similar yeah. to Gold Coast, but got to remind myself it's the Calgary Kookaburras here. I think they'll take that as a compliment. And by the way, Gold Coast, of course, will have a women's team in the AFL women's competition uh, in 2020. Under three minutes remaining in this contest, another opportunity as Ireland does the defending work and managed to allow the run to Flores, who had it and then dropped it, got it back again. Gave away the hand pass. Hurry kick on this occasion there by Chabad, who went inside 50. Bar couldn't stick. In goes Casillas. She is immediately wrapped up, got the hand pass away. But her teammate, I think it might be Davidson, immediately got caught as well. And the umpire's blown the whistle now and says, I'll have the football back and I'll call for a ball up. So a handy lead at the moment to the Calgary Kookaburras. They're currently sitting on 4-11-35. New York two behinds on our scorecard as... We wait for play to recommence. I think that's Wolf who managed to got out of that pack. Went long in towards the middle of the ground. Is it going to sit here for Ramillard? Ramillard, oh, bumped off the football without it, I think. And the umpire said, in the back. And that will be a free kick. So, Joanne Ramillard has the footy. And she'll be at centre half back for the New York Magpies. She was looking a little worse for wear. And obviously, that was a push in the back. You get a free kick for that every day of the week. So, Ramillard. Now looking towards broadcast side. Goes with the kick. Oh, threw it. Had it momentarily and then lost it. Skuznetsny had to go back again. Tried to sell the candy. Oh, one-handed. Oh. One-handed by Chabot. The one-handed boom into the ground. The umpire called play on, though. Bit harsh. In goes Hemingway. Gets a hurry kick out. Now the opportunity and a bit of space if she can try and pick it up cleanly. I think that's cutting. It's over around the football. Nearly got pushed over the boundary line, but stayed in. Then oh, got caught holding tackle. the football by Hillary Perry. And she gets the resulting free kick. What a tackle. What a tackle right there by Hillary Perry. If I'm correct, I think she joined us on our podcast. I can't remember. I've spoken to so many Canadians, I can't remember who I've spoken to. But I'm sure I've spoken to Hillary Perry. And Perry with a kick up along the line. And it falls into an empty space where there are a flock of magpies waiting for it. And another kick from the Magpies, and Perry charges through. Look at that, going through three different opponents, kicking it down there. Because he has pushed off the ball. Now here comes Caroline Ireland with a kick down into the forward line. Magpies recover, trying to move it out. Here's a kick up the ground, right in the middle, right up the guts. But Calgary is all over it, and a kick going wide. And Calgary again, if they can pick it up cleanly, will have another attempt. They have it in their 50. They've had it in their forward 50 the entire match. It seems like ball comes to ground. Magpies try and clear it, and they're not as successful as they would like to be as Calgary picks up the ball again. A shot toward goal. It is on the way. Did it go through? And no, it's off hands. Off hands of the Magpies for one behind. So according to our scorecard, we have it as 4-12-36 Calgary, two behinds New York. And they have blown the whistle for full time as time has expired. Calgary, 4-12-36 New York. Two behinds here at Surf Cup Sports Park in San Diego. What a performance from Calgary. To be honest, they were a little bit sloppy there and got tired in that second half. But they did what they needed to do. They dominated that first half. They built the big enough lead. And they were able to sit on that for the second half. Absolutely. As you all would say in Australia, they seem to run out of petrol. Yeah. Or as we'd say, run out of, run out of gas. Well, we said the same thing. We'd say run out of gas. Yeah, yeah. But it definitely seemed like fatigue did catch up with them. But still, they were dominant. Uh, it seemed to have most of the. I would love to see a percentage statistic on how much time the ball was in their forward half because it had. you have to think it would have to be close to 90%. Mm. Indeed, and just having a look at those players, as we said that Caroline Island was massive for them, growing plenty of run. Hilary Perry as well, that experience on those IC17 players. Trisha Rolfe came into the game during the second half. Rochelle Chabot I, was uh, really impressive for me. But Gamington got a little bit of the ball as well. Uh, the Robertsons were trying to create something in that forward line. So they had plenty of talent that they spread right across the line, the Calgary Kookaburras. On the other side, as you expect, the Coplos and the Wolves just kept going all day as well. If I look down the line, look, Hemingway tried to push up the ground to try and get herself in the contest as the game uh, went on. Cadding picked up a little bit of the ball. Mikhail took some marks there in that uh, second half. But the problem was they were just they were short, not necessarily on match winners, but those that are another level for New York, those that are able to have, even if it's only for a couple of minutes, have an impact on the game. And they just couldn't find those players. And then absolutely, what about Hillary Perry, though? Boy, is she is she absolutely just 
tremendously strong at breaking the lines and, and moving and just shrugging off tackles and controlling the footy. And continued on to form from IC17 as well. Absolutely. And, so, and for Calgary, this sets up, uh, depending on uh, the next game that we're going to cover, of course, if Denver should uh, win through in their game against Sacramento, that then sets up a uh, Calgary-Denver showdown on Sunday morning for who will get into the grand final, where at this stage, as we speak, it's looking like San Francisco. True. I think if you look at San Francisco and Calgary so far, in terms of dominant performances, they have really, really been very dominant. And Western, or I'm sorry, I was about to say Western Bulldogs, but the Denver Bulldogs definitely will have something to say about that. Indeed, and that's coming up shortly, Denver and Sacramento. You've been watching YouTube.com forward slash USAFL. Peter Holden and Gil Griffin with you on commentary. Mark Gonzalez on camera. We look forward to catching you soon. Remember, YouTube.com forward slash USAFL, and there you're able to uh, see a range of games from the USAFL Nationals, the Liberty Tour, uh, a couple of USA Freedom games, and, of course, the regional tournaments right throughout 2017. On behalf of the commentary team, thank you very much for your company, and it is by for now.